Making DNA fragments. So recombinant DNA technology allows us to combine genetic material from different sources. And the first step in recombinant DNA technology is making DNA fragments, which is a bit of DNA which contains the gene that you want. So recombinant DNA technology involves transferring a fragment of DNA from one organism into another. Because the genetic code is universal, so the same DNA base triplets code for the same amino acids in all living things, and because transcription and translation are quite similar in all, the, all organisms, the transferred DNA can be used to produce a protein in the cells of the recipient organism. And the recipient and donor organism don't actually have to be the same species, which can be quite useful. And organisms that contain transferred DNA are known as transgenic organisms. So there's a few different methods for making DNA fragments. But to transfer a gene from one organism to another, you need to get a DNA fragment containing the gene you're interested in, which is called the target gene. So the first method is using reverse transcriptase. So most cells only contain two copies of a gene, um, and it makes it difficult to get DNA fragment containing the target gene. But cells that produce the protein coded for by that target gene will have many mRNA molecules that are complementary to the gene. So mRNA is easier to obtain. So the mRNA molecules can be used as templates to make lots of DNA. And the enzyme reverse transcriptase makes DNA from an RNA template. And the DNA produced is called complementary DNA or cDNA. So you can see in this picture here, in the blue, you've got the mRNA. And then you've got these free DNA nucleotides. And reverse transcriptase helps to join those uh, free DNA nucleotides which line up against the template mRNA to form a complementary a complementary base pairing to form a complementary DNA copy strand. So it's called complementary DNA or cDNA. As an example, pancreatic cells produce a protein insulin and they have loads of mRNA molecules complementary to the insulin gene but only two copies of the actual gene. So reverse transcriptase could be used to make cDNA from the insulin mRNA. So to make cDNA, mRNA is first isolated from cells, then it's mixed with free DNA nucleotides and reverse transcriptase, and that is used to make the mRNA as a template, which will then synthesize a new cDNA strand from the free DNA nucleotides. So the mRNA acts as a template, You've got your free DNA nucleotides, which will line up by complementary base pairing, and reverse transcriptase helps to do that to create that new cDNA or complementary DNA. The second method is using restriction endonuclease enzymes. So some sections of DNA have palindromic sequences of nucleotides. And it's a bit like some names are palindromic, which means they read the same in the forward direction as they do in the backward direction. So Hannah would be an example of a name that reads the same forward as it does backwards. So that is what is meant by palindromic. Well, we also have some sequences that are palindromic, and the sequences consist of anti-parallel base pairs. Base pairs that read the same in opposite directions. So restriction endonucleases are enzymes that recognise these specific palindromic sequences, known as recognition sequences, and they cut the DNA at these specific places. Now, different restriction endonucleases cut at different specific recognition sequences because the shape of the recognition sequence is complementary to the enzyme's active site. So there's a few examples. You've got eco r I, which cuts G-A-A-T-T-C, and then another one is HIND2, which cuts A-A-G-C-T-T. -T. So if recognition sequences are at either side of the DNA fragment, you can use restriction endonucleases to separate it from the rest of the DNA. 
and the DNA sample is incubated with the specific restriction endonuclease, which cuts the DNA fragment out by a hydrolysis reaction. But sometimes when it cuts, it leaves something called sticky ends, which are small tails of unpaired bases at each end of the fragment. And sticky ends can be used to bind the DNA fragment to another piece of DNA that has sticky ends with complementary sequences. Okay, the third method is using a gene machine. So we've more recently, there's been technology that has been developed that means you can actually make DNA fragments from scratch. So the database contains all the information required and it means the DNA sequence doesn't actually have to exist naturally. So things that you would do, you design the sequence, then the first nucleotide is fixed to some sort of support like a bead. Then nucleotides are added step by step in the correct order in a cycle of processes that include adding protecting groups. Now these protecting groups make sure that the nucleotides are joined at the right points and prevent branching. You want it to be one straight chain. So short sections of DNA called oligonucleotides, which are roughly 20 nucleotides long, are produced. And once it's complete, they're broken off from the support, the protecting groups are removed, and then the oligonucleotides can then be joined together to make longer DNA fragments.